What's up, guys? Nathan here. It is now day four of the league, and I think I owe you guys all a quick update. I'm trying to play a lot right now, trying to kill as many Conquerors as possible and just learn about the new Atlas so I can better make videos. So this is going to be a quicker one, but hopefully you guys can learn a little bit. First, I'm going to talk about my league start and how that went in general, and then I'm going to talk about the specific build I chose, which you can probably tell by the title of the video is Blade Vortex Chieftain. Anyway, let's get into the video. So my first attempt at league starting was indeed the shockwave totems that I talked about in my experimental league starter video. Basically, I figured that it was going to have the most damage, the most survivability, and the most easy uh, mechanics to play around as far as like any other build that I could think of. Like seriously, it had so much EHP, so much damage, and just the playstyle was going to be perfect for learning the conquerors. However, I made two very major mistakes, and hopefully you guys can listen closely and not make the same mistakes I made. First of all, I the way I made my tree sort of backloaded all of the damage into one crit and two just the latter half of the tree. So when I really needed the damage the most, basically for the first three acts when everything was super overtuned, and I don't know if it's actually overtuned, but it's definitely way higher tuned than it was before, I was just struggling. Like I probably spent like a good five minutes killing Vol Oversoul and it was just absolutely the most painful thing ever. Secondly, and this is the much more important thing, is that I heavily underestimated how shitty the mechanics of shockwave totems were. Now, this goes back to, you know, things I've talked about before, which is say, making sure you test out the mechanics of a skill before you decide to League Star or create a build around it. Shockwave totems has a 25% chance to knock back on hit. What I didn't realize is, one, the knockback is significant. I thought it was a lot smaller, so that's just a big mistake on my part. And then the second thing is that if you have a lot of shockwave totems, down that 25%, you know, when you have four totems going, that's a hundred percent, and you don't know where it's going to knock them back. There's no pseudo random chance that's going to make it so that if you put four shockwave totems with the enemy in the middle, that they're just going to stay in the middle. It's just it's random, they go far away. You're constantly resummoning totems. Everything about shockwave totems just was a little bit too, you know painful for me to deal with for leveling. So needless to say, I got it about halfway into act four. And then I said, fuck this. I'm out. I'm going to reroll. There's no way I'm killing the awakener with a build like this. So I went back to the drawing board and needless to say, I wanted to pick something a little bit stronger. I think I, the one thing I was worried about about this league slash expansion is that a lot of the values have just been increased across the board. And it's very noticeable to the point where I don't really think, uh, people or at least me can easily meme around you really need to try to roll something uh, pretty strong and just well-rounded and especially single target focused for a bit for a league like this so i decided to choose the blade vortex chieftain mainly because i knew it was going to have great damage great survivability and fantastic early game scaling with elemental overload free conversion and avatar of fire i mean literally you get to act four you have all of these tools you're just one shotting bosses it's fantastic and most importantly for me it's still just low-key snow flaky because really there weren't a lot of great life-based blade vortex chieftain guides out there and then looking at Pee-wee ninja there's a couple people that started with it you know probably due to you know the video i put out but there's really just a, not a lot of blade vortex chieftains out there so i figured i would pick up the skill pick up the ascendancy and uh, try to show people just how powerful it can be so how did it go? As per the footage you can see in the background, it's really goddamn strong. It's first of all, just super tanky right out of the gate. It has insane regen, insane leech, and life recovery rate. There's this node that Chieftain has, and they've actually reworked Chieftain since last time I played it, so I had never used this node before, but it's a Tatsilo or something uh, cleansing water. And basically it gives you a big fuck you amount of regen, a big sort of fuck you amount of fire resistance. And most importantly, it gives you, well actually two really, the other two stats are even more important is the 10% of physical damage taken as fire damage and 50% increased life recovery rate if you've taken fire damage from a hit recently. This means one, physical damage is going to be a little bit mitigated. That's a very strong stat, by the way. In case you guys don't know, physical damage taken as Ellie is a very strong defensive stat if you don't have a lot of physical mitigation. That is going to help mitigate some physical damage. And then every time you get hit, uh, with just, you know, physical or fire, you're going to get this crazy life recovery rate, which is a multiplier on all of your region. Like, I think the base region this character has um, before any gear, you know, just passives on the tree is around like 15% uh, per second, 10 or 15%. I, I, 
I, I should probably double check this. I'll, I'll put a little, you know, little thing somewhere telling people how much it is. But it's a huge amount of regen. The leech, you know, you get free fire leech. That's going to be another 20% of your life per second with just one blade vortex hit going off. And then life recovery rate bumps all of that up by 50%. Like you can see, hopefully I can find some footage here of just how insane this is. But basically, if I get slapped and my steel skin procs and my uh, stone golem, my max level stone golem gets summoned, I just like my life just starts shooting up. It's like I'm playing an unbreakable job. I really can't uh, tout the strengths of this node enough. I think people sleep on it a lot because 100% fire resistance feels like, oh, you're just playing, you know, some budget build. You can't afford to get your fire resistance elsewhere. No, it's all about that life recovery rate. It is absolutely insane and feels really good too. So the other forms of mitigation I have on this build, because obviously I have a lot of life and uh, a lot of regen, is I'm trying to get as much fizz taken as Ellie as possible. Right now I only have a roll on my helm as well as the node I just talked about, but I want to get that on at least one or two other pieces of gear that's really going to help deal with some of the heavy physical hitters, especially the Warlord Conqueror. And then I also want to hopefully anoint Soul of Steel because there's not a lot of super fantastic... Um, let's just say aggressive nodes, DPS oriented nodes for a build like this. I've kind of picked up all of them. So Soul of Steel is going to give me some nice fizz mitigation and then give me some max res, which in turn translate to more fizz mitigation, which makes this build not only a beefy, high life, high regen, high leech sort of character, but also just has a shit ton of mitigation. Uh, overall, build super tanky. You know, let's let's move on here. The damage is the next thing I want to talk about, and I'm super satisfied with the damage because people always talk about how crit is the objectively better version of elemental overload, like as long as you have money to spend. Well, I don't have money to spend, so I had to go elemental overload, and I was pleasantly surprised with how much damage I was able to stack up. There were a couple of factors that went into this that I'm not going to lie, I got kind of lucky on my drops and was able to buy. I have dropped two exalts and impulsa, so that translates to about four exalts worth of currency in the first 40 hours of gameplay for this league for me. But uh, I was able to buy a level 21 vol blade vortex as well as a weapon and a shield, each one with plus one to level of all physical spell gems. Uh, that means I'm rocking a level 23 vol blade vortex, and really that is all the scaling you need that and what you have on the tree and uh you're just chilling you got plenty of damage i think yesterday i was like the number three highest dps blade vortex chieftain which is a big deal because everyone else on that was using um bows and signal fire yet i managed to maintain the survivability and utility of using a shield and shield charge and still stack up with the big boys because i was able to get those rolls i also think those rolls are kind of slept on so if you guys are at all interested in playing physical spells keep an eye out for plus level to all physical spells on your weapons and on your shields you can get so much damage and people just kind of forgot about these they added them last league and they're kind of overshadowed by the new plus uh one or two to level of all minion gems on the convoking wombs people don't really realize but the physical spell gems scale just as hard as minions with gem levels it's really insane as far as raw numbers go uh we're looking at around one probably to 1.5 million dps when everything is on when i say everything i mean elements are overload your wave of conviction your flammability your uh, flames advance all flasks and right now that's feeling pretty okay i'd say i can absolutely decimate one and two watchstone conquerors three watchstone conquerors are starting to take a little bit i've definitely died once to the hunter conquer at three watchstones i've yet to attempt a, a fourth watchstone conquer but i suspect with proper execution and learning the fights, which is what I plan to do. Uh, this is going to be plenty of DPS for that. Uh, the clear speed is also pretty solid. Just talk about that for two seconds. I do have some plans to make it really top tier, uh, but for now, it's a fantastic clear speed build when it comes to indoor layouts. And then for outdoor layouts, you know, it's fine. You just got to pop your vol blade vortex from time to time to help you clean up things you don't feel like walking over to. So next, before I wrap this video up, I wanted to talk about the improvements that I plan on making to this build going forward, because for me, this build is hitting around the early 90 mark, and usually I would be looking to re-roll by now, but it really feels like the game is so... Um I would say it just requires a lot more investment into your characters to really make them feel good and make them to be able to do the content you want to do with them. And I'm just having so much fun with this character. So I'm going to continue pushing this character, uh, hopefully into the mid nineties. And, uh, I'm just having a lot of fun with this. So I'm going to keep playing the character and keep min maxing it just a little bit. So hopefully we can have a really fantastic bosser by the time this chieftain is all said and done. The main challenge is actually going to be getting more damage at this point. And the reason why it's a little bit tricky is because one, I am elemental 
Mental Overload. I'm not crit. I really don't want to respect to crit. I know I'm going to end up losing some life and some of that awesome survivability that I love. Um, and at the end of the day, I think I can get enough damage. It's just going to require a little bit of work. And the reason why I need that more damage is because these Conquerors have absolutely crazy life pools. When I'm dealing around a million DPS and the Warlord Conqueror is taking several minutes to kill, uh, probably like I think it took me like a couple minutes to kill a... Um, triple watchstone warlord conqueror and um yeah that means i'm gonna need a little bit more damage i'm hopefully uh wanting to push into the two or three million dps range and if worse comes to worse i can just switch out unleash for conk effect i absolutely love the quality of leaf lit life for unleash it makes bossing easy and it makes clearing really fun but if i really need that raw dps i can just switch over to conk effect and just my dps will just shoot through the window because i'm essentially playing on a five link right now because unleash is not a damage multiplier it's a real damage multiplier in the sense that you are going to have more blades going more often than not than if you weren't using it but in terms of seeing a raw number go up and pass the building unleash is literally uh, worthless. So the ways that I can go about increasing my uh, damage numbers, other than, you know, switching to conch effect, which I really don't want to do, is to one, grab myself a Herald of Ash synthesis ring, which is by far the biggest DPS gain I could possibly make. I'll show you in um, Path of Building when I'm making the video, but I'm pretty sure I go from like freaking i don't know 900k sheet dps to like 1.4 mil sheet D, sheet sheet dps and um that's just absolutely nutty and then i don't know for sure if this is going to work but i imagine that the um catalysts are going to be able to influence the roles on the herald of ash ring because they are elemental uh slash fire related roles i don't know if there's a catalyst for that i could be totally off the mark here but all i know is they have a value on them and that value is pretty big so getting any amount of percent increase on that value for the herald of ash synthesis ring is going to again just give me a bigger buff effect give me bigger uh fire damage give me bigger flat fire damage there's a lot to love about potentially using a Herald of Ash Synthesis Ring. And right now, they're going for around 5x. Uh, I've seen some as low as 4x, but I only have around 3x my name right now because I had to buy a Cinder Swallow, you know, just all the stuff that you can see on my profile that I'll link below. Um, but yeah, that's going to be my big purchase for this build, and I'm hoping that's going to be enough to push me to a point where I can hopefully kill some four Watchstone Conquerors comfortably and maybe even attempt... The Awakener. I heard that guy's super overtuned. I didn't want to spoil myself and watch the boss fight, but I'm going to keep pushing and see what I can do. Uh, the other huge thing that I want to do for this build, and this does absolutely nothing for my DPS, but it's something that I missed out on in Synthesis and I really want to get in on now, is I want to craft an Explodey Chest. Now, if you guys don't know what an Explodey Chest is, it's a uh, carryover from Synthesis when you could get these weapons, and they were one-handed weapons that would read with the implicit, uh, enemies killed explode, dealing 3% of their maximum life as physical damage, and you could get a bigger one, I think it's like 5% of their max life for two handers um but those were insane for cleanup and just clearing in general if you were playing a build that didn't have great clear suddenly you were just like a top tier clearing build because those explosions would chain and you could literally delete entire packs just by killing one mob as long as you had some sort of uh you know, physical scaling in your build. I have fantastic physical scaling in this build. I full convert to fire. I have flames advance. I have elemental overload. I have tons of increased fire damage all over the place, like generic increased fire damage. I have pen. I have chance to ignite. I have heralds of ash. Everything about my build is like borderline ideal for a uh, explodey chest and i'm saying chest because they used to be weapons but now that roll that three percent of max life explodes physical damage uh that is now um exclusive to crusader influenced chests of item level 85 or higher so procuring a base to craft on i suspect is going to be a little bit tricky i probably should be trying to snipe them right now um, but i don't feel like i want to make the investment just yet because i'd have to like link the chest and just spend like more more exalts than I, I have right now. But that's something I really want to do for this build. And hopefully I'll be able to put in the time necessary to min max the build and craft a chest like this. Worst case scenario, I craft a chest like this anyway, and then I use it on another build. Because really, as long as you have some kind of like fizz scaling in your build, uh, the exploding, that exploding prefix is just going to uh, be a fucking monster. And if you're using a headhunter, I'm not going to get a headhunter because I, I just don't. I don't know. I've never really played the game that way, and I'm not the kind of person who ever makes enough money to really afford a headhunter unless I just stop re-rolling. 
but I always re-roll, so that's not going to happen. But if you have a headhunter and then you also have this prefix, there's tons of headhunter mods you can steal that will just make the explosion stupid. Uh, there's an old cute dog video about it. Uh, you could go check that out. I'll link it in the description below uh, in case you're curious to learn more about how big of a fucking deal this prefix is. But that's like a big goal for this build and just this league in general for me to get a very decent chest, hopefully with that prefix and just a little bit of life on it and maybe one other beneficial mod. My, my sights aren't set super high, but I really would like a good chunk of life to go along with the exploding prefix. And the very last thing, I'm just going to gloss over this. Hopefully all the improvements I've talked about so far will be enough to get me to a point where I can start attempting the Awakener. I don't think the Awakener is going to be easy, but I hope the Awakener will be maybe physically possible um, if I can just get these improvements. But if I need to just push it that extra step then i can try to get some gain physical as extra fire on both my weapon and amulet i'm really hoping this isn't going to be necessary because if i have to min max this build to that point to be able to kill the awakener then that means the awakener is fucking crazy overtuned and um it really limits on what i'm going to be able to do with my builds in the future because i'm going to have to make really fucking good ass builds and i can't just meme around so I'm so sorry. I know I said this was going to be a quick video and it was quick in my mind. It took me two seconds to write the overview, but I definitely rambled for a really long time. So I apologize for that. Anyway, I'm going to get back to playing right now. I need to try to keep progressing as quickly and efficiently as possible so I can pump out some boss guides. These bosses are super cool, but I don't really feel comfortable with them yet. I've only killed them like... I don't know, probably, uh, you know, three, three times, three times for each of them or so, two or three times for each boss. So I definitely need to sink a little bit more time in before I can start making those guides. And, um, yeah, I'll be, uh, farming watchstones <laughs> nonstop, killing these bosses as most as I can, uh, testing out the awakener. And I will be doing all of this, uh, live on Twitch. So you should check me out on Twitch at, uh, twitch.tv slash Nathan brother, Bob. I'm live every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 2 PM central time. And, um, yeah, that's the thing. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Metamorph League. If you're interested in getting a full build guide for the build I talked about today, please just let me know in the description below. Sorry, comment section below, and I will definitely consider doing so um, if the build is good enough, which I don't know yet. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. My name's Nathan, and I will catch you next time. Thank you guys for hanging out to the end of the video. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters, Real Human, Zikorax, Squally, Zoljan, Coda, Julia, Alan, Kepler, Sparky, Kata, Fusk, Putzak, Heiser801, Kyle, Logan, Ice Dude, Ginzik, Anonymous, and Orangina. Thank you guys so much. You're really making my life a lot easier and bearable. Uh, like, really, really, I do appreciate everything, especially, you know, league start times, all this stuff. I'm, I'm working hard, and then I get to look back and see that you guys are supporting me. So thank you so much. And uh, if anyone else is interested in... Uh, joining my patreon uh team family uh group whatever you want to call it you can check me out patreon.com slash name another bob and then you can also uh you know check out my discord there in the bottom right hand corner if you need to get in touch with me and my twitch i already talked about that but it'll all be in the description below so don't worry about that anyway thank you guys so much for watching and keep playing the game kill the bosses do your thing good luck never give up never surrender bye